So if you guys are like me, you get done ice fishing, shanty goes somewhere in the garage and it stays there, taking up nothing but space. I'm going to show you guys a cheap, inexpensive way to get it out of your way. So I purchased this kayak hoist. You can see it's got straps, got hangers, rollers. You attach it, pull one cord, raises it up. I'm going to show you guys how to get that thing off the ground and make these work. I'm actually putting some extra plating in around the plastic for the straps just for extra security. I'm going to bolt it in. I'll show you guys how I'm doing that. But this kit comes with the locking mechanism for the rope. Your strap holders. Of course, they're pulleys. Everything you need. Two straps and the rope. For about $20, $21, you can't beat it. I bought this one at Menards. So I made some pieces of metal that I'm going to use for a backer. I'm going to bolt it through the plastic of the sled. I'll show you guys how I do that. But these are just give a little more support than just the webbing. Or straps, should I say. So the straps that come in this kit for the kayak, these straps go around and then they tighten up on the kayak. You basically slide the eyelid ends over these hooks after it's around the kayak and raise it up well what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to disconnect all of this i'm going to have two separate straps i'm going to double up the material make it the length i want and drill two holes in it and mount it to the side of the sled i'll walk you through this so basically what I want to do is find a good center point to where I'm going to lift this from. Get a good measurement, double up my material. Because you want all the headroom you can get, you want this up tight to the ceiling. So I want to get a nice measurement. Put me in the center. I cut this one down. Now I'm going to tape it. So I know where I'm at. Doesn't have to be pretty. All you're going to do is drill it now. Put two, two bolts in it. Should be good to go. So the length of the sled. The seats. I have a two seater. And pretty much. I just went dead center of each seat. That should balance out pretty well. All right, so I'm going to take my little plate. I'm going to go right between the seats. I think that's the best area with this one. I'll let you know what kind of sled I have after. I'm going to go ahead and drill two holes. Go right through the plastic. So I'm putting these plates on just for extra support. It's pretty thick plastic. I just don't want to take a chance. I've already pre-drilled my holes in my nylon. I'm going to put them on the inside of the sled. Just so when I bring it down, I can tuck them inside and they're just out of the way. So sometimes getting through that material, you might want to just thread it through to get to that hole. Or get the hole over the the bolt I'm good on that one I'm gonna go ahead and put the backer plate on and then the nut same thing on the other side You can use any nuts and bolts you want, stainless. This is just mild steel. 
I figure once I put them in, it's gonna take forever. If they rust, I don't mind. I'm not taking them off. So I got that one started. Now I'm gonna bring up the back plate. One on the inside, one on the outside, just to secure it. Put my nut on. Tighten everything up. <clears throat> All right, so I'm tightened down. I have a small metal bracket in the front, one in the back, just extra protection, a little more meat around everything. We know plastic gets soft or hard in the winter, should I say, could crack. So I got a double strap. I can take my tape off now. Going to a single. And it has the loop for the hooks. So when I lower it down, I can flip them on the inside. It's all out of the way. No bothers. I come back home, I want to raise it up with the open end. Come down, grab that hook. Straight up she goes. Alright, so that's one side done. Now I need to work on the other. The other is, of course, the side where the tent folds down at. It's going to be a little more complicated, a little more work to get to everything, but it would be worth it in the end. So I'm taking my time. You don't want to drill a hole through that material. So I'm kind of pre-drilling, but you can go through a touch. Then I'm going to reach my arm around and make sure I pull all that material up. Get it out of the way. And then you can go through with everything. Okay, guys. So you can see I have the pulley centered. Both sides. I truly don't believe they have to be totally centered. There is some give in these. So I think we're going to be okay if we're off a little bit. It's kind of hard to center everything. So the next step is to mount our pulleys. These go up first. These lag bolts go inside. This gets mounted to the rafter. The pulley connects to that gets bolted together and this is one that I've mounted you can see the lag bolts inside they're into the rafters these bolts are loose right now you want the pulleys facing the same way on each one so I'm drilling the holes so the wood doesn't split when the lag bolts go in. Then you can install your bracket. I like to use a socket and a ratchet because I can really feel how much I'm putting on it. You want it tight, but you don't want too much. You don't want to split that wood up top. And if I didn't state it earlier, if you want the rollers going the same way, this one here, it's on this end. So I'm going to put the pulleys on this end also. Bolts go in. Now these nuts have a neoprene insert in them. 
I'm not sure if you can see it or not inside here. So they're only going to run so far until you tighten it up. You can only do so much by hand. And then we'll snug these nuts up. These you just want to snug because otherwise you'll collapse that. You can actually draw that material together with that neoprene or rubber inside on them nuts. They're not coming loose. So don't worry about that. Just snug them up so it's all tight, snug. You're good to go. All right, so now it's time to get this rope through everything. Let's see how this goes. So this is the uh, whole assembly. Let's see, everything's the way it should be according to the instructions. We'll give her a whirl. Well, we have liftoff. Without a doubt, she's up in the air. I could have made it a little bit more even. I think it's going to work out perfect, though. They're not light, guys. They do take a little effort to get them up. But what a saver on space. I'm tired of this thing being in the floor. So there she is, guys. About as far as I need it. I have 10-foot ceilings in the garage. So I have plenty of room to walk underneath. Which is fantastic. It's off the floor. Comes with a bracket. Mount it to the wall. Wind the excess cord up, you're good to go. I hope this helps, guys.